Hey guys, so um, what we've noticed is that uh, as a product manager, we, we've discovered that we end up sort of operating in two modes or wearing two hats, uh, as, as we like to say. Um, and and these, these two modes come across as, um, one, it's like, it's things that pop up. And, and, and what, I, what I like to say is projects that creep up because of long-standing anecdotal hunches. So these things bubble up and, and the, the way they, they get talked about is, you know, lots of customers talk about how we need to improve this feature, right? And, and well, we've, for a long time, we've been talking about doing this. And when, when the, the meeting gets called, we all get together and we talk about how to make the feature better and what to improve and that sort of thing. But when you start to probe into why are we actually here? What, what caused us to all, all, all come together and actually dedicate resources to this? It's, it's very hard to get sort of down to the real cause, right? And, and everything starts, starts to feel like, well, we, we got to make it better. You know, like everybody on the team knows we have to make it better. And we've been talking about this for a year and now it's time to put the, put the rubber to, to the road. And, and when, um, when, when this happens, there's like this, this notion of, I go into the mode of managing risk. It's, it becomes less about how to make this sort of the best feature in the world. And I go to, into this mode of how do I make sure that we don't get ourselves into a situation where we push something out there that, that ends up spiraling and puts us into, into a bad situation where we're under delivering or we have quality problems or, or any, anything like that. So that's, that's mode one. Any, anything to add to that, Ryan? Does that sound familiar? Yeah, well, so I'm thinking of cases where we say, you know, we need to redesign the search section, or we need to totally rethink our dashboard. And everybody agrees because there's a lot of, like you said, these kind of long-standing anecdotal hunches. <laughs> it's like yeah. we've all heard a dozen different stories and seen a dozen different problems with the search area or the, the docs and files section or the way that we have our to-dos report or whatever it is. There's a big area where we all know it should be better, and then there's this kind of tendency to bring it up as this kind of big overhaul, right? Or this big new thing that we should build. Like, oh, we really have to build, like the example we'll talk about in a little bit here, the calendar. We really need to build a calendar. And everybody's like, yeah, we have to do it. And I think when you talk about that risk, it's, yeah, in, in, in a sense, it doesn't feel risky because everybody knows that people have been asking for the calendar. But uh, as a product manager, you're starting to think through, well, what does it really mean? You know, what if, if there's a lot of moving parts to this feature and we start, let's say like with the calendar, if we start building a week view and a month view and we have to integrate with other calendars, I mean, just the integration part could spiral out of control. And uh, a week view with, with really good UI for dragging, you know, the length of your meetings and making everything line up and stuff like that. I mean, that could be a really expensive, time-consuming, open-ended problem. And how are we going to make choices and how are we going to kind of, uh, I don't know what you say, like box this thing in so it doesn't mm -hmm. spill out all over the place and become uh, a never-ending project or, or worse sometimes, you know, sometimes worse than, we talk about how sometimes worse than, than, than a project that fails is, is a project that ships that you wish hadn't shipped. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you, yeah. you put a whole bunch of functionality out there that leads to more and more feature requests, or there's a bunch of UI now that you can never take back that's taking up space that, that is in the way when you want to put a new feature out. Yeah, something that you said to me really struck home, which was shipping is a one-way street. I think that's an incredibly powerful notion. It's, it's, it's very hard to take these things back. And, and the, the, the nightmare in my mind when you talk about the calendar functionality is is the integration side of it, right? You got to integrate with Outlook and Google and there are protocols that, but now somebody launches a new calendar, right? And well, if you don't integrate, you're, you're lacking, right? So we're, we're putting something out there. We're not, we're not incredibly concrete about the benefit. We, we think that improving the calendar is a good idea, but we're not real sure what the upside is, but we're committing ourselves. We know we're committing ourselves to a lot of maintenance down the road, right? So these things are sort of like, they're, they're not, they're not, matching up perfectly and and i think the other thing you said is this there's like bottomless ripple effects like yes. I, don't, I can't see the end of 
what I'm committing to, and that right. becomes very, very risky. Even sometimes features that seem smaller can have ripple effects. You know, you, you offer, let's say, color labels on files in an app. Yeah. And now, as soon as you do that, you realize, well, people are going to want to customize the colors. And then if, peop if we allow them to label, they're going to want to be able to bulk change the labels, right? It's sure. just like one thing leads to the other, you know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, so there's this, there's this role. I, I, I think what, what you and I have talked about is we wanted to surface this because there's a little bit of a danger. In, in, in episode one, we talked about getting to what we think is, I, I can't use the word ideal state, what we think is a better state, which is basing decisions on demand, right? But the, the thing that we didn't want to have happen is everybody who listens race out and cancel all their meetings and say like, this is what I'm working on, right? It's like, because the reality is time is flowing forward. We have resources we need to get, dedicate. We need to continue to make the, pro the product better. So th there will be things that we are going to work on that do not necessarily have this perfect, perfect's the wrong word too, this good grounding in demand. And, and we just need to, we need to be in those meetings. We need to pr be productive in, in those meetings. And, and when you and I sort of thought about that, we said, it feels like a, when we're in those meetings, we're managing risk. That's kind of like what we, what we call that mode, right? Yeah, there's the stuff that's already going to happen, right? The stakeholders yeah. want it or uh, somebody made the decision that this has to get built or there's already just momentum already. And you can't just say, everybody stop the world. I want to I wanna go and study. I'm going to do my demand research on this and get back to you in a while. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that you can't do that with. So in those cases, the best thing you can do is Actually, we're, we're, that's something we can talk about, right, is kind of having these, these, these smaller projects prepared that you can, you can put in that have the lower risk, right? So yep. it's, it's, it's kind of a question of when these risky projects come up, you're in the meeting or, or you're, you're working with other people on the team, and then the big, the big hairy idea comes up where maybe for other people it seems like a clear win. Of course we should build a calendar, but you're, you're seeing all the risks as the product person it's it, we talked about how I, I need to have options there where if 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 it's something that I really have a lot of doubts about, I think it's going to spiral out in scope or whatever. Um, I want to be able to say, hey, I, I'm going to take that on as as the product manager. I'm going to take that on and and I'm going to take that put that into my hopper of things that I'm kind of chewing on and learning more about. And we're not going to schedule that. I'm going to get this down to a point where I understand the demand better so that we can have a more crisp and detailed conversation about what really matters about the idea instead of just building everything we can think of and hoping that it covers the case, right? Um, but then the tension there is that we can't, we can't always say, hey, I'm going to go research that because otherwise everybody would just be sitting around all the time while we go do our research, right? <laughs> so we also have to have this kind of we have to we have to have a sense of other kinds of projects that we can line up that don't have the same kind of risks. Yep, and and so that that working a hopper is is what we think of as the other mode, right? So I have the first mode, which is I'm managing risk. I'm 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 playing defense. I'm trying to make sure we we don't go into into some big unknown, some bad territory. And 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 the other mode is is this. I, I'm working with my team. We're working on figuring out demand, making sure it lines up with a strategy, talking to, to users, doing interviews and that sort of thing to sort of get out ahead of these things and, and really shape up ideas and insights that we can then bring to the design team, the, the product team to say, here's, here's a really crisp understanding of demand. Now let's have what is hopefully some concrete conversations on on how to how to address this demand that that is free from all of that all of that risk and and we're going to get into the calendar example uh, a little in a little bit but but I, I think you also touched on something else is we we use this notion of nook and cranny for things that are close in and, and sort of like the cracks that we can fill in the product that um, that don't have those ripple effects right so we can we can spot things where we say. There, there is, there's not a lot of potential harm down the road. This is pretty close in. It's, it's well constructed, and we can work on that while I go do the, do the work that, that, that I need to do to, to shape up, 
shape up those big unknowns into into concrete things, right? And yeah. More on the nooks and crannies. What what does it feel like to have a have a nook and cranny? Yeah. So the the nook and cranny feature, there's it's all about those little gaps that are already there waiting in the app, where there's a clear space for the new piece of functionality or the change. Uh, you can see the edges of it. It's not something that's going to spill out and affect a lot of other screens. Um, I'll give you an example. We sketched out a feature idea at Basecamp recently where we noticed that um, uh, you, can, you can move documents between folders in Basecamp and you can drag and drop them between folders. And what we noticed was that when you copy a folder or you copy a document to some different project, you don't have any way to choose the destination folder. Mm -hmm. And um, But be, it turns out that we actually have a dedicated screen for doing the copy. So you can click on the document and say copy it to this project and you have a whole screen that you get to choose which project you're copying to. So there's room on that screen for some kind of a drill down to choose the folder on that project that it should get filed under when you copy it and or when you move it. And uh, because we don't, we don't really have any kind of a fear that there's going to be something else that we're going to want to put on that copy screen. You know what I mean? Where we're going to say, man, I really wish we didn't devote that real estate on the screen to, to the folder drill down. No, like this is a natural part of the copy that we didn't implement yet. The space is there waiting. And because we have a dedicated screen for it, there's no uncertainty about how this is going to spill out and affect other things. There's, 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 there's plenty of room there. Versus if we had maybe some kind of a crowded menu or something or a crowded screen where where we'd have to figure out a way to squeeze this in I, I wouldn't feel nearly as comfortable about it it wouldn't feel like a nook and cranny feature yep so so there's there, there's edges to this and yeah. it, it's it, it doesn't have that feeling that you described of the of the colored labels where it's like they're going to ask for batch operations they're going to ask for customization this is like the the real estate is already dedicated so i'm not i'm i'm not going to need to get that back uh, anytime soon, and and I, I can see sort of the edges of the feature requests and that sort of thing. So it's it's an, it's it feels more well defined, and I can hand this off to the team and, and have them have them work on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The the last, so I think that that was the first point we want to touch on was just these two modes. The last thing I'll say because I, I think these this is this is great, uh, and we talked about this earlier. The 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 things to look out for are one feature two point oh. Any time, like it's one of those triggers. Anytime you come up, it's like we're doing search 2.0, yep. we're doing dashboard 2.0. It's yep. like, okay, um, we've called it that, but what, what's the reason? What you know, try to dig back in, and a lot of times you'll find yourself in, in these situations. And the other thing is, you use the metaphor trolling with a net as opposed to hunting with a spear. In these conversations, a lot of times what we end up doing is we take a ton of use cases. And we drop them all on, on the table and we say, when we build this new feature, all these people are going to be happy. And, and mm -hmm. I almost view it as like, a, it's a cheat. Like, because we can't name the few things that we really know are going get, to get better, we just pile a lot of stories in and we say, see, this is, all this is justification for, for doing things better. The problem is, it, it might be good justification, but it's bad data when it comes to making design decisions. Even if all these things are true, I don't know how to interrogate this big lump of use cases in a way that leads me to choose building one feature over another or one button over another. So think, things get things get very murky very quickly. Well, you know, when people ha don't really know what the problem is that they're solving, an easy way to make everybody relax is to just say yes to all the stuff that you might need. You know what I mean? Sure. It's like it's like if yeah. you're if you're packing on a vacation. If, if you can take as many bags as you want, then you don't have to make any decisions. You can take your, you can take your whole closet if you want to, right? It's exactly. only when somebody says like, hey, we've got this one, this much space, what's going to fit in there? Then you have, to, then you have very hard, hard questions to answer. And if the whole concept was framed as build a calendar or, or redesign the dashboard or whatever it is, um, when you start to ask everybody, well, what goes into this box if we scope it down to one change or, or, or if we scope it down to seven weeks or whatever it is, right? And then, then you realize like, well, we, there's this feeling like we have to do it all. And if we don't do it all, it's not enough, you know? Sure. And, and usually when that happens, it reveals the fact that we haven't done that, that homework, that, that thing where we take it in the hopper for our, our 
kind of solo time, you know, because as a product manager, there's these things that we have to chisel them down and figure out what the real demand is and what the real problem is so that we can go back to the teams with a much more stripped down and precise definition of the problem. And that way people can say, yeah, if we do this, this, and this, we're done. And we don't, and we don't need those other things because we, we have a clear definition of what done looks like or what success looks like or what the problem being solved looks like. Absolutely. So, so what you, you have a story around this uh, on your team, right? There, there was this, uh, I guess I'll let you tell it because you'll tell it better than I, but, but the, the way I'm interpreting it is you had this anecdotal thing happening where people started talking yep. about, let's, let's, make, let's do the calendar thing. Let's, let's build a calendar. Let's make it better. And, and it's not that people are like advocating hard for this, but it, what it, it's like murmurings and like it keeps coming up and just like, Random conversations, things like that. Do I have it characterized yeah. right? Yeah. So the case that we had here was, we uh, we we knew that customers were asking for a full blown calendar. The the version of, of of Basecamp that was in production until uh, very recently just had a very stripped down agenda view, and we were hearing from customers all the time, "You should build a real calendar." Uh, people internally knew uh, that we had calendars in previous iterations of Basecamp, and uh, and we didn't build it into version three, and so there was this kind of general sense that that we didn't build something that Basecamp needs, and uh, and and Basecamp needs a calendar, right? And um, but every time it came up, we just said no to it because it felt like a big engineering project. It felt like a big open-ended huge piece of work, especially now that we're also supporting multiple devices, you know, with iPhone and Android and everything. And what does it really mean to build a calendar? You know, it's like, uh, does it mean uh, a month grid and a week view? Does it mean that you can drag events between days interactively? Does it mean that you can stretch the height of a meeting in the, in the, in the, in the, in the weekly view? Uh, does it mean integrations? There's just like a ton of questions about what why, why, like, what, what do we need to build here for it to be good, right? When do we, what do we need to stop? And it's one of those things where the ripple effects just don't, never stop, you know? So it, it, it feels like a, a, like a six-month project minimum, which for us, I don't know, it depends on where you work, but for us, that feels like an like a eternity, you know what I mean? Our, mm-hmm. our typical big feature releases are, are eight-week cycles of work. So, so we kept saying no to it, but the thing is that, you know, these things, they keep bubbling back, you know, you keep hearing it and then you say, okay, we have to try to come up with something. So this is a case where it comes up, uh, in conversation and then you say, okay, I'm going to take that one. I'm going to take that one as one of my research projects. And I I've got a handful of good kind of nook and cranny features that I'm going to line up for the next few rounds of work. And then while we're doing those things that have a, a kind of a, a nice bounded downside risk, uh, I'm going to see if I can find an angle on this problem, right? And, um, and we talked about that in episode one. So what we did was we did these, these customer interviews where we talked to people who had written in support and asked about needing a calendar. And uh, uh, we came to a very sp- specific way to frame what they were asking for. And this allowed us to focus the problem and focus the team and end up coming up with a very different design than what we had ever thought we <clears throat> needed to build. Actually, we ended up with, with a version of a calendar that we were able to release in, in seven weeks uh, with three people working on it. So we really came up with something lean. And um, uh, Amazing. Uh, I, I can show you actually kind of how we, how we drew it. This is using one of the tools that you and I have been talking about a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a sort of a technical product manager tool. You know, we call it a CSR diagram. And um, basically what we want to do is we want to be able to spell out a very specific problem case where if that thing gets better, then the feature worked. Okay, so, so we don't want the problem to be a calendar is missing because that's too open-ended. But if we strip it down to a specific story that comes from a, a detailed struggle that happens on the demand side, then we've got something to work against. So I'll, I'll sketch it out here. The, the, the basic structure is like this. We do, we make three boxes. And there's three things that, that we use to define the problem. So the first thing is the circumstance. 
So that's the situation that the person was in. Um, and, and, and the story that we were hearing, whenever we talked to customers who were, who were asking us for the, you know, we walked them back and we did the thing we talked about in episode one, asking when, right? What was the chain of cause, what was the chain of cause and effect that led you to ask for this? What were you trying to do, right? And they said, um, when I'm trying to uh, schedule a resource, So what we mean is somebody has designers and they're trying to figure out who to schedule on this specific project this specific week, right? Or maybe there's a certain number of meeting rooms and they're trying to, uh, to, to find a room that's available to schedule uh, a meeting there, right? So they're trying to schedule a specific resource. And then the second thing that we use is, is the current solution. And this is on the supply side. So uh, they were using the, this, the, the, the plain agenda view that, that Basecamp had at the time, which was just a listing of everything that was booked. It was just a, a list of everything that was on every event that was, that was in the system. And it didn't show any blank spaces. So you couldn't see the free days. All you saw was a listing of events. So what would happen is it's the, 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 we say the result of that is, is, um, is they said, I can't see free spaces. So they didn't know when they could schedule the work. It was just too difficult to see. And, and, and this, basically what happens here is this leads to the, the, the struggle, right? This is, this is what leads them to, to write us and to seek out workarounds and to try different things. So we, we heard stories about people who would always have a wall calendar at hand as they were looking through the events to see what it was, or people who would export all of their events uh, to a to a different calendar app so that they could see them, you know. Uh, so and, and and just to just to connect it back when when we think about demand and supply side language, right? This is another example of the reason that we had these long standing anecdotal like stories and and things like that is because when the customers are creating the feature requests or they're writing into Basecamp, right? They're thinking of the, the grid they see in Outlook or the desk, like the big desk calendar that they have on their desk where they can glance down at it right. and say, like, I've got, I've got things on this day, but, you know, like very quickly this day's empty, right? So they all they know, this is not like to cut down customers, but it's like the, the easiest way to describe it is like, why don't you guys have a calendar view, right? Yeah, if it's I'm what we all do. Like, we, we define it as uh, from the supply side. We're like, this, yeah. is, this is what you should build instead of this is what I need. So it took the translate, like you, what you're doing is into this diagram on, under, under C, under circumstances, you're using the interview process to basically unpack that and say, what, it's not that you want the calendar, it's what happened and what were you trying to, trying to accomplish. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's a specific case of using it where we can, where we can understand the struggle, right? And then, and then the second part of what we do with this diagram is we use this to frame an alternate solution so what we're going to do is we're going to say, in the same circumstance, they're going to use a different solution. So this is going to be, uh, this is S2. And they're going to get a different result. Otherwise, why, why bother changing anything, right? You know, there needs yeah. to be a different result. And, and now what, what we can do here is we, can, we understand what the after needs to look like, what the, what the different results should be. So we can say, um, I can find a free day. To schedule it right and uh, then what what we what this what we do here is we we take that circumstance we take that result that we want and and we put a question mark here and we let those things be the requirements on the solution space so what we want to do is we want to get together now as product designers and say what could we do that would allow people to see the free spaces. And now that's a totally different <clears throat> conversation than how do we build a calendar, right? Absolutely. It, it gets rid of a lot of things, right? I, immediately, I don't, I don't, I might not need integrations. I might, uh, like there, there are things that I can, I can start to set aside now that I have the situation and the result sort of tightly defined. Yes, and it also opens us up to things that we could have never considered when we were in the box of it's gotta be a calendar. 
So for example, one of the things we considered very early was um, an interface like you see if you try to book a haircut or a, or a massage or something like that, you know, you see only the available days and then, and then you pick the free day. So we said, oh, could we do something like that? Could, could it just be show me the open times and it's like an appointment booking interface? And, uh, but then we looked, we looked more closely at the, at, the, at the use cases and we realized that a lot of time when you're trying to schedule a resource, you, you work with the other people who also use those resources and um, you want to actually see how everything else is booked to make your decision. You know, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're getting a haircut, you don't care who else is getting their haircut and when. You just either take the slot or you don't. But if you're working with other people, you might, you might see that somebody is available to work one day, but they might be totally slammed the rest of the week versus somebody else has a really thin week. So it's useful to be able to see how other people are booked when you're, when you're doing this kind of resource allocation. Mm -hmm. So, so we, what happened was uh, Jason and I actually sat in a room and, and, and I, I presented the problem in this way. I said, is there something we could do just to allow you to see the free spaces? And, and then there was this kind of different moment of creativity that happened and Jason pulls out his phone and he goes, yeah, you know, check out this, check out this calendar on the phone. It's, it looks like a month calendar, but, uh, it's just dots, you know, and you can't drag anything between the cells. You, you can't interact with them at all. All you can do is click on a day and then it, and then it reveals the, in the agenda view underneath the calendar, what's going on that day. And you can click, 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 or tap, tap, tap different days and quickly get a sense of what's happening on any given day and wh where there's an opening and where there's not. And we said, man, that's not, that is not as good as a real calendar, right? It's, it's definitely not as good as, as seeing everything beautifully rendered, you know, like with, with these long pills for multi-day events and everything. It's not as good as that. But if we plug it into the CSR, it, 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 it's a good solution, right? It's, it's, it's back to having a definition of better, right? The, yes. the hard thing is if we just define better calendar, then I need best in class. I need to beat every other calendar, at least be parity, right? So I need to build everything up to that. Yes. But, but now what we have in the, in the R, in the result side, is something that I can actually measure. I can measure design concepts against, right? Yes. Can I see the free spaces or not? It's not... Can I integrate with everything under the sun? Can I send invites? Can I receive alerts? All that. It's, it's a very clear way to understand is what we're proposing, doing a really laser focused job of, of, of answering this demand, answering the demand that we identified in the first place. Exactly. And the, the real definition of success in the design concept, it's, it's here, it's in the delta between the two R's, you know? It's, yeah. it's not about how are we better than other calendars or do we live up to the definition of a calendar from the supply side. It's, it, it's about there was a status quo and people were struggling in this circumstance. And now if we replace the solution with this alternative, have we made things better or not? Yeah. So, so back to your back to your metaphor of the you know fishing with the net versus the spear, right? Yeah. If I, I can build the calendar that is better in every way, and what I'm hoping to do is catch some great use cases, right? Because people use calendars yeah. in all different. They're on the road or and the, they're they're at, at their desk. They have big teams and small teams. What I'm hoping to do is make it better in every possible way, and have people sort of float through and say, "Oh yeah, this this works for me." The, 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 the difference between that and what we're talking about is the, is the spear fishing. We have identified one very specific struggle, and now we are designing to fix that thing. And we, we should be able to see, like you said, that delta immediately. Yep. Right? Like the satisfaction should, be, uh, it should go up immediately. And we're, we're not in this, in this position where we're out there searching and saying, did things get better? Did things, it got better for some people and worse for others? And we're not sure what's working and what's not. That's right. the, that's the real contrast that we're trying to highlight here. So we ended up with a very concrete idea that we called, we just called it dot grid. And then we also had another thing that we called simplified agenda. And basically what happened was we stripped back the visual styling on the agenda because it was just going to show you the events that were selected on the dot grid and put mm -hmm. more of the visual styling on the dot grid. And the dot grid mechanically was a much simpler idea than a calendar. And, 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 and we said, we're going to do these two things together. And it's going to be a similar experience to, 
using these kind of uh, common phone calendar apps, but it's going to be on the desktop and it's going to it's going to scratch the itch, and we're going to get the thing done in a single one of our typical working cycles, which we have eight week cycles of work. And we actually ended up finishing it early and getting it done in seven weeks. Um, what what did you finish? So because it's more than design and engineer like documentation support. Like what, what did you actually get done? Because that's that's um. That's astonishing for me. Three three people, seven weeks uh, for something. It's not a calendar. We can't call it a calendar, but for what you guys pulled off and implemented, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, you know, it's all in the scope. You know, because the scope was tight, and also um, there's also technical decisions that 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 allow us to do that. You know, if we had to build a native version for iPhone, that would be oh, yeah. a totally different thing. But we because we were able to use a hybrid approach and reuse our web views on the, uh, on the phone, then, then um, you know, we, we really had a very manageable scope here. But of course, that's part of, that's getting into a, a whole other area of, of a discipline of, of, of how we only build what's absolutely necessary to scratch the itch, you know? Um, yep. But the thing is that if you don't have a definition of requirements that, that is that specific, you're never going to get there. You're never going to be able to to chisel the thing down and get, and, and get that scope smaller because you're always going to have the what ifs, right? It gets bigger, if anything. It, goes it the always other gets direction. bigger, right, exactly. Um, and the other thing, too, is that, uh, you know, uh, I, I wanted to mention that we, we put the dot grid here in S2 as our new solution. Uh, if, you, if you plug the calendar, the big bad calendar, if you plug that into S2 here, it's also a good looking solution. And um, I hope, you know, from what we talked about in the beginning of the episode, it's clear that it's the risk side and the cost side that made us say we don't want to plug that into S1 or S2, right? It's, yeah, okay, we could build a super mega ultimate calendar and then you would be able to, to find a free day to schedule, but it would cost us 10 times as much. And who knows how, how many <clears throat> open-ended, um, uh, you know, uh, there's too many rabbit holes there. Yeah, I think this 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 presumes that you have an eye for simplicity, for getting the most simple, elegant sort of solution to the problem. If you're not worried about resources and you're not worried about complexity and and risk, this tool is not necessary for you, right? Go like throw if you don't mind, engineers. If you don't it, mind waste and and then shipping waste. a whole bunch of stuff that you can never take back. That's going to be in your way for every future iteration you want to do. <laughs> Just have at it. Build the calendar. It'll be it'll work out great. Yeah. <laughs> so so hopefully what we what we've done here is illustrate sort of the next step. So when we think about building in episode one, we get to uh, the notion of, of of walking back the story and and getting the whole story based on a supply side request, right? And I think what we have here with the CSR is now a way to take that data and plug it into a tool to say. Yes. Here's what the story looks like. This is the circumstance. This is what they did. Here's the result. And, and most of the times, if it's a feature request or a bug request coming in, it's a, it's a negative result. And now we can, like you said, draw those lines down and start to plug different solutions in and have conversations around, is this, is this bloated? Is this an over-engineered thing? If we're just trying to figure out how to see the free spaces, do we really need to build all this stuff? Right. Uh, and we can start to have some better conversations. Right, yeah. Just to tie them together, like you were saying, the, the CSR is actually kind of focusing in on one part of the, of the story that we got. So we talked last time about going into the demand side, asking when, and then getting that series of events, right? So I went yep. here and I tried this and then I used this and then that happened and I didn't like that and then I wrote you the support request. So we're, we're actually taking one of those events and saying, that was the circumstance. And then they used this, and then they got that result. And what we want to do is we want to give them a different path, a new story that's going to happen from that moment. And I think this is something that, you know, if people are interested in it, we can get into it in more detail. But the CSR is actually a really powerful tool because we can pick different moments in the chain, you know. We can yep. go backward a step and say, well, why were you even trying to schedule an event, right? Or uh, there's, it's actually arbitrary where you pick the starting point. The, the critical thing is that, we actually pick a point from a real story with a real struggle and yes. look at the real cause and effect, and then we focus on that delta. So we've got a bottom line for figuring out what's valuable and what's not. I love it. And we'll be back with more stories and more tools and, and different uses for this tool and all those great things. We sure will. Yep. And maybe we'll awesome. drop a, uh, a link to the announcement about this, uh, this feature into the transcript so that if people want to see 
what we're talking about, that this isn't just talk, but this is, you know, this is real <laughs> stuff that's happening. They can check it out. We're building stuff. Absolutely. Cool. All Thanks, right. Thanks, guys. Yep.